here we are in the nursery and I'm going to use um, these seedlings as a way of um, explaining what we think is happening. So the sunshine is promoting photosynthesis within these leaves. While the photosynthesis is running, it is absorbing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and it is actually exuding or spitting out oxygen. It's part of the oxygen and the carbon dioxide cycle. Now that is built, so it's turning or it's turning atmospheric carbon dioxide into plants, into plant, into leaf. Now what we've noticed and what we suspect is with the emissions is it is actually stimulating photosynthesis to be more efficient. And as the photosynthesis is, is more efficient, the sugars that the leaves are making to provide power for the plant, some of them are actually going now down into the root. And what we see and what we suspect is the roots are exuding sugars into, into the soil and that is what is feeding the soil life. Now if you can imagine this as a big maize plant and the amount of sugars that they will be exuding, you begin to get an idea of what sugars are going into that soil to feed that soil life. And it is that soil life which again absorbing, growing, absorbing carbon dioxide, growing into uh, what we call organic matter. Organic matter is, is like this, it's, uh, it's, it's the non-mineral um, element of soil um, which gives the soil its life, it gives it its permeability, it gives it its absorbency, it adds so much to soil. So through the plant, through promoting the plant, through pushing the plant, we are able to get a better plant root interaction which leads to a better root soil interaction which is the basis of what we believe is the phenomena we're seeing and this translates back into tons hundreds of tons of organic matter just imagine these plants across Africa the temperatures here the amount of photosynthesis which can be which can be going on it translates to millions of tons of carbon dioxide back into the soil where it can work for Africa it can work for the small farmer and it can work for the planet this farmer has chosen to actually spray his solubilised emissions over the top of his crop. And as you can see, you can see that brand new shining tank where the diesel emissions are bubbled through and they extract the nanotubes, the soots and the nitrous oxides. So here we are on the fields, the plains of Canada. This is a state of the art machine. They are taking the emissions, as you can see, and they're being bubbled through water. This captures the nitrous oxides, the soots and the nanotubes from the diesel emissions, and then they're injected with the planter into the soils. Innovation across Canada, Australia, has led to this basic idea being used and applied more and more usefully for farmers. These farmers do not use fertiliser. These crops are fertiliser free. So with this, this technology that you see on this big tractor here, when you, this, this itself is $70,000, which is a very expensive machine, and it's, 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 uh, it's been an expensive learning curve for us, but without us learning from this piece of machinery, we couldn't consolidate this very expensive technology down to the 75 horsepower tractor without it but what we've done is we've also been able to scale down the cost of the exercise because by learning from here we've been able to introduce the solubilizing uh, aspect to the tractor which has um, improved the the heat exchanging that we need to do to cool these big tractors down but by introducing that we've scaled the manufacturing down so that on a 75 horsepower tractor it costs you nine thousand five hundred dollars instead of seventy thousand dollars so it has brought the economies of scale into that sector that was unaffordable. But if we didn't do these, uh, the, these modifications and if we didn't learn from what we did with this, we wouldn't have been able to bring that product to Africa, that small, uh, small tractor product for an affordable price. And uh, it can be repaid, I believe, in four years, the whole carbon kits, including the bioactive, including the tractor and the planter. And we want that to not be a burden on the entrepreneur. We want the entrepreneur to work hard for four years, pay it off, and then go forward with a good piece of machinery for another good, good 10 years of service and make a good solid business out of it. And so 
all this education, all this learning, pain and suffering and grey hair that I have has produced that product and that's what's important uh, in bringing this agricultural sector forward. Here we are now in Mozambique, uh, the crop is cotton. You can see the tractor engine emissions are bubbled through the water in the soluliser at the front of the tractor. At the rear of the tractor you can see the basic drill is ripping into the soil and they're placing the cotton seeds into the rip and spraying the solubilized emissions onto the drill line. You can now see the pipes dosing newly planted cotton seed with these solubilized emissions and the ripping tines are opening and softening the soil below the seeds. Now the seedlings are beginning to emerge after some heavy rainfall. These leaves are photosynthesizing over time now. They are working really hard because of the nanotubes. The roots are going down deeply because it's been opened by the rip. This plant now is working very, very hard. Now one of the upshots of that is they are bringing sugars from the photosynthesis and they are now being translocated down into the roots. You see, on the right, these are seedlings from seven days old after the emissions. As you can see the root hair are all over the roots and it's, it's led to a fantastic soil root interaction. So imagine how much soil life, how much interaction there is between these two after six months in the field. On the left you can see these are 18 days old and they've had no emissions. The first five days are the most important. The solubilizer at the front of this tractor is doing exactly the same job. It's putting emissions through water which are then injected above the rows where the seeds are planted. This is sorghum and this is in Tanzania in heavy soil. It's the beginning of a story of carbon farming. Here we have the crop now having germinated and now emerged. The weeds have been killed by the herbicide and they have now become organic matter. They're lying over the surface of the soil, keeping the soil cool and keeping the moisture in. You can see the way the seeds have actually started to emerge. You can see the power of the germination. On the bonnet of the car, you can see on the right where the seedlings have come from carbon farmed soil. You can see the mass of roots. You can see how much more advanced they are. Because they have had the solubilized emissions, this has stimulated them to grow stronger, to grow deeper, you know, to serve the plants better. This crop is going to go the distance. That outcome is, is decided within the first three weeks of the crop growth. The roots are now well established in the sor sorghum crop and the plants are away. The plant is sucking in carbon dioxide through their leaves for photosynthesis to make sugar. These healthy plants may exude up to 20% of their sugars through their roots. This is feeding the soil life. With no fertilizers added, there is now a natural root environment. It has not been made salty or polluted by the addition of artificial fertilizers. And the soil is beginning to live the way nature intended. This is mixed crop. Over four seasons, the organic matter levels in this field increased by over 2.34%. That represents nearly six tonnes per hectare of carbon put back into the soil. This doesn't include any of the carbon dioxide emissions saved by not using fertiliser, the manufacture of fertiliser, the application machinery necessary. To add over 2% organic matter in three years is outstanding. In Northern Europe, the rule of thumb is up to 1% of organic matter can be added to soils per generation. This is Mick holding up one of the plants from his cereal crop in Tanzania. This has been stimulated by the use of the emissions, exuding sugars. Multiply that across the million, the 100 million plants which are in this field, all at work, all sucking in carbon dioxide, pushing it down into the sugars to build up organic matter, Carbon farmer techniques, they supercharge the plant's photosynthesis to create more sugars. This is what we think is happening. The reduction and elimination of fertilizers allows a much healthier soil root alliance, generating more organic matter faster. You can see this root. This root is telling you that it's happy. And it's happy because we, carbon farmers, have given it the conditions in which it can thrive.